Well, thank you for your lecture. Okay. Okay. Quiet. Okay. Silence, please. Silence. What would interest a television crew to travel halfway around the world? Compel a college professor and his assistants to search the depths of a mountain stream. It's not quite what we're after. Too bad, puppy. Or become the center of attention for an international expert on species preservation. And our hellbenders are pretty docile, but they can give you a nasty bite. The answer, one of Tennessee's most unique residents, an animal that hasn't changed since the age of dinosaurs, the hellbender salamander, the largest salamander in North America. All right, let's do some ultrasound. Hellbenders are dying too soon, so researchers around the globe are trying to find out why and how to stop that. The fact is a hellbender has never been bred in captivity, but that might change very soon thanks to some research going on in a small, remote corner of the Nashville Zoo, away from the crowds and away from the other animals. We haven't identified the reasons for their declines. It could be pollution, it could be disease, it, it could be siltation. Another possibility is it's just a, a new chemical that's been put in the environment in the last 20 to 25 years that's widely used. There they are, that's a good shot. The short-term goal yeah, is to develop techniques to cryopreserve or superfreeze hellbender sperm for future generations. We're interested in developing laboratory-style methods to breed them, and we think we can manage the genetics of the captive population better yeah. that way. The long-term goal is to save an important part of our animal kingdom. If we can figure out a way to help preserve their DNA and their genetics, then, you know, if we can figure out whatever the underlying cause is, um, you know, then we'll have that DNA before we lose it so we can actually help breed them back and then hopefully one day return them back to their respective streams or their areas that they came from. Both goals are creating an international reputation for the Nashville Zoo. Well, you know, we actually are really participating in worldwide conservation. That's the most important thing. So, it, you know, it makes people know around the world that we're serious and we're involved and we're not just here for entertainment. We're here to research and learn. Dr. Robert Brown of the Royal Zoological Society of Antwerp, an advisor to the Nashville Zoo, is using a special hormone to help the hellbenders reproduce in a controlled environment. It's a process that has caught the attention and interest of a documentary television crew from Belgium. And once we've got it cryopreserved, we can um, recover it for up to 50, 100,000 years. No one's sure because no one's lived that long to tell, but certainly for a very long period. And then we can fertilize the eggs and we can get that particular strain and put it back oh, in the yesterday. rivers. And there's the testes. He's committed to saving yeah. the hellbender. And it just doesn't reproduce. We've got old ones there don't reproduce, there's clearly something wrong with the water quality or the habitat. So when we solve all that and we reintroduce it, it's just a fantastic icon species yeah, for uh, yeah, the achievement of technology and progressive thinking over destruction of the environment. Go ahead and spray this down for the next animal. Field research is just as important in determining the fate of the hellbender. We have a, a traveling lab with cryopreservation equipment, liquid nitrogen, disease sampling, uh, equipment, uh, ultrasound, so we're able to do a really good health assessment on the animals. Now we'll get a uh, Kittred sample. It all sounds good, but with each step of the process, from collecting new animals in their limited habitat. All right, she is 39. To the careful monitoring of specimens for disease and fully developed eggs. To the attempts to strip sperm from certain males, the fact remains. This is uncharted territory. What really bonds these researchers to the goal of preservation is the fact that the threat to the hellbender is a threat to us. Because they're telling us something, something we're doing wrong that has messed up the ecology of what was once normal. And so, you know, what, what are we putting into these streams or the air or whatever that's affecting them, that's a, potentially gonna affect us down the road, we just don't know it yet. I'm Alan Griggs on Tennessee's Wild Side.